In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about the Sculpt Brush inside Blender. My name is Emmanuel Okafo and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I have gone ahead to prepare three examples that I'll be working on to just um, get familiar with the Sculpt Brush. So we have um, a basic cutting. We also have another variation of a cutting. And then finally, we'll be doing something more advanced which is a character cloth. So let's get started. To start with, let's start with the very basic. So I'm going to go ahead and add a plane and scale it up slightly. Go into edit mode and add some subdivision. And now we can go into the sculpt mode. One thing you need to know is that the sculpt brush, uh, we have two um, sculpt brushes inside Blender. So the first one is the sculpt, the cloth filter brush. And secondly, we have the cloth brush. So we'll start with the cloth filter brush. So you want to bring, click on your tool and select the cloth filter. I'm going to right click here and when it shows the header, I'm going to click on show tool setting. This allows me to access um, the filter brush settings and you can see access this menu here in the tool panel. So by default, it's set to gravity and once you have that set, you can just click and drag on the scene and the brush will fall. There are several variations of the cloth filter brush so you could switch to the inflate and to inflate the geometry. So let's create a very nice example. I am going to add a simple UV sphere. To enable the collision with the cloth filter, you need to go to the physics panel, selecting the collision object, and set and enable the collision. Inside the sculpt mode, we want to make sure we click on use collision so it can detect the sphere. And now if we set this to gravity and move it, you can see it detects it. You can also use some other brushes in Blender to kind of clean up and make everything look good. You can bring out the inflate brush by hitting I or bringing up your tool and selecting inflate and just drag on it. So all of this works in conjunction with the cloth brush. That's the great thing about this particular feature. So we could switch back to the cloth filter brush and try other, we can try other parameters. So for the X pan you can use this and you can get stuff like this and if you use the mesh filter and or relax you can relax it and if you set this to smooth you can smooth out the area so let's check out some of the other parameters of the cloth filter brush so you have the ability to play with the orientation so you can enable each of these orientation based on what you want you have the ability to increase the strength, especially if you want the effect to take place, um, if you want the effect to be more prominent and faster. So you also have the mass of the brush. So you can increase the mass of the brush depending on what you're trying to simulate. You also have the cloth damping to play with it. And next you have face set. You can also still access some other parameters by checking the tool panel and checking if there are other things you can use but generally these are the parameters you need to use so now we're going to talk about maxing maxing allows you to kind of restrict the movement of the cloth simulation so this is kind of like the pin feature with the blender cloth simulator so use the mask you can hit m to bring out the max tool and you can just click on it i'm going to increase the strength to one and then click on this point this is going to tell Blender not to simulate the points with the mask. And then we can use the mesh filter brush. We select the cloth filter brush. We can set this to gravity and move this. You are going to notice it's going to retain the points where we have masked. And you can do this on the fly to kind of isolate or mask out areas. So if you hit B, you can max out the top area. And if we simulate it, you get this. Next, let's talk about the use face set. The face set allows you to have more advanced simulation whereby you can now break the asset into different parts. To be able to use the face set, you can bring out the face set brush. So the face set allows face set brush allows you to draw your mesh. Currently, if you draw your mesh, you might not see anything. That's why that's because you need to go to the overlay and increase the visibility of the face set brush. If this is your first time for using the face set, it's quite straightforward. So you have uh, um, some of the operations here which you could use with the face set brush. Set, um, you could clear everything by using face set from visible. So it clears everything. If you draw on it, it can create a new face set. And if you click and draw again, it creates a new face set. If you hold on control and draw with your mouth pointed at the 
active face set it can extend it by just drawing on it so you can hold on control and increase the value you also have some operation here to shrink or grow the face set you can also get face set by going into the edit mode and select selecting bunch of faces and once you go out back to the sculpt mode you can go to face set and set face set from edit mode selection to work faster you can easily go here and right click and do add to quick favorite i already have some ads added to my quick favorite and it makes working with face set more easy you can also add some brush selection here like i have mine set already so i have the cloth brush here i have the cloth filter i have mesh filter to allow me to easily access it so now with the face set selected so the face set allows you to control the, the way the simulation affects the geometry so if i bring out the cloth filter brush and tell it to recognize or use face set now if i apply it you can see the influence is going to affect the entire geometry but it's also going to respect the face set we can repeat this without the face set turned on and you can see it all falls down but once we have the use face set turned on you can see it's going to work but it's also going to acknowledge the face set so with your mouse hovering around any face set you can be able to have specific control for each of that and the great thing is most of the settings here and everything you've learned from this can be transferred onto the cloth brush. So let's go to the cloth brush now. The cloth have more parameters compared to the cloth filter brush. So um, st starting with you can see it has radius, radius unit, strength, um, normal, um, normal radius. So usually you will not need to work with this. But where things come in handy is the simulation area. So before we go more in depth, let's talk about the deformation type. So by default, it's set to drag. We so uh, drag allows us to just pull the faces, and we can switch this to push. Push allows us to push the faces, and you have other varieties. You can play with the cloth mass. You can play with the cloth damping. And importantly, you can enable collision, and this works just as the cloth filter brush works. To be able to use face set with the cloth brush, you need to click on advanced and check on use face set. You can also click on mesh boundary if you don't want if you want to keep the boundary of the mesh. So let's see it without the cloth boundary turned on. So I'm going to uncheck this for now, and if I move this, you can see how it moves. If I have this checked. And move this you can see it retains the boundary of the cloth the mesh you also have the first fall off by default it sets radio and radar and this works best for most situation but you also have the plain method that works for specific uh, situation so a very good example of that for using the planar is just pull this but before we move forward there's just one more thing I want to show you okay so if I grab the gravity brush with the in the cloth filter, see if I move this, you can see it's just going in one direction. So you can play and change this by going to the orientation and switch this to word, or you could play with view. So as you can see, you can change the position either way. So let's take a look in to a more advanced and controlled environment. So here in sculpt mode, we can use the gravity brush like we talked about to move stuff around. But we want to retain the top part. So we can use the max, max into, maxing tool by hitting B to bring out the brush uh, box mask and just click. And now if we use the gravity brush, you can see all of the parts we want to move most. And we can play with this local or anything desired. To get the best results, it's great to use face sets. So to use face set, we could draw it, but the, my preferred method is using the edit mode to kind of create my own face sets. I'm going to use the box select to select this point and jump right back to sculpt mode and click on face set from edit mode and like we have talked about you can access that here and I will hide this and I'm going to repeat the same thing for the rest 
So now we have different face set that we could work with to get more controlled simulation. We want to click on use face set and now if we move the gravity you can see we have better reaction. If you if if the face set are quite distracting you can turn this off or reduce the visibility. So this is what you get. You can use a scale brush to kind of scale things out when it enables your face set. And now we can use the cloth brush to kind of push things even further. I'm going to switch this back to the ray dial. You can always increase the strength if you want faster feedback. Sometimes try using um, different simulation area. And finally, let's talk about the dynamic simulation area settings. So once you set it to dynamic, it just apl applies the effect to the areas where the cursor is. So as you can see the behavior right now, if I switch this to global, it's going to affect more areas. So if you want it to just be specific to a little area, you can do that. So let's go to the next example. So with this, we can go to sculpt mode, mask out this area with the box selection. We can also mask out this area. And let's create a face set. And you have your your cotton. You can always go to and use the cloth brush to even emphasize the details. So finally, let's go and do something more advanced with everything with lent. Now with this character, everything with lent should allow us to be able to create a more good-looking cloth simulation. Of course, if you have if you're creating a game asset, you can bake this down to a lower geometry. And if you're creating animation, you can use the multi res modifier to kind of help with that. So now we can go back to sculpt mode with gravity turned on. Can adjust this to get several different type of effects. So like I said earlier, using the using the face set really helps. So let's use the face set to kind of break up this geometry. So the way we're going to break it up is we're going to start from back and front and then we break it into individual smaller chunks. So I'm going to select my lasso select and then go into wireframe mode. So you could go into wireframe mode through here. And now I'm going to select the front area of the character. So to keep things organized, we can create a poly group and assign everything we have here the poly group okay and now we can select this area though to redo it and face set from selection and we can hide this we'll repeat it for this so this is what we have so far so in the vertex mode we can select this area and hide it and now let's repeat it for the back So now we have like a rough face set. You can also go here and grow or shrink stuff as needed. Now we can simulate and get better result. So let's click on use face set. So now as you can see we are just simulating the needed part based on the face set. Pull this in slightly pull this in slightly and remember you can always use the mesh filter set this to inflate and inflate everything now we can grab our cloud brush which also recognizes our face set and we'll check on enable collision and use face set now we can add more details to push it even further I'm going to reduce the strength to 1 and switch this to drag. As always, it's, always, it's quite helpful to use reference to be able to guide you to get the best result. So you can always uncheck face set and be able to move everything as a whole. 
and you can use the traditional scalp brush to kind of fix all the penetration part spend more time and you once you master it it's easy for you to be able to create a desired result which you're going for so i hope this video was helpful if you wish to see more from me don't forget to hit that subscribe button so thank you so much for watching bye bye for now see you next time